Hello and welcome to another episode of Laying Down the Lore, a monthly podcast in which we aim to separate our ghouls from our goblins, our snotlings from our skaven storm fiends, and our bloodthirsters from our blood letters, and generally ask, what's up with this Warhammer stuff? My name is Ben Crone Barber and I know fuck all about Warhammer. With me is my co-host Christopher Crallen Allen. Hello! Who also knows fuck all about Warhammer. Very, very true. <laughs> and my dear brother Darren. Hello! who knows so much about Warhammer, it's a wonder he has time to do anything else. After gathering online to slay some vermin in the name of Sigmar, this dichotomy between our levels of understanding became clear, and this series is an attempt to address that ignorance. Good morning, gents. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. How are we doing? After uh, doing the prep for this episode, I'd just like to open my offering with the phrase, the Skaven can go and get fucked. <laughs> I would also like to take this uh, opportunity to apologize for the Skaven. Um, it was, uh, I was reminded <laughs> of the uh, terrible things that they did to the dwarfs in the last episode. And I really feel like it wasn't, it wasn't our finest hour. It was not our finest hour. It was we deeply pretty regret it. ridiculous. That was really, really dick, dick behavior. It was a dick was move. Scaven. It was a dick move. You yeah. know, putting Warpstone yeah. in a in a water supply. It's not the one, man. It's not the one. And I feel as the Skaven's newly appointed PR representative that um, you know, <laughs> I, have a, I have a duty to to apologize uh, for all of Skaven. Do you life. feel like the PR agent for Donald Trump? What he actually meant to <laughs> yeah. say was, could you imagine that job? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Just like yeah. mopping up the mess. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a full time role for sure. <laughs> right, Crow. What did what did we get into last month? Uh, well, you just touched upon it, but yeah, shit went down. So previously on laying down the lore, the Battle of <laughs> lore, Cripple lore, Peak, lore, lore. we continued our journey on the history of them dirty rats, the Skaven, and their insatiable appetite for the green stuff. When they went cuckoo after discovering the Great Warpstone meteor that crashed into Cripple Peak many many years ago. But all was not well when the Skaven realized that this was also the domain of the great necromancer, Nagash. Agash. Agash. <laughs> Due to their need and obsession for Warpstone, an uneasy truce was made between the ever numerous Skaven via the Council of the Thirteen and the powerful Nagash. Agash. Agash. <laughs> <laughs> this truce was soon broken when the council discovered dastardly plans to conquer the world with his undead army and Nagash's great spell. Oh. Acting quickly, the council defeated Nagash by gifting the mighty Fellblade to one of Nagash's prisoners, in said prisoner's name here because I didn't really research which <laughs> name that was, which sent him postal was it Azer- on his Azerbaijan? Was it Azerbaijan? Al Qadizar. Yeah, same, same thing really, isn't it? Did you write this in that? First of all, <laughs> did you write this? <laughs> did you fucking write that? <laughs> did you write this? And why have you been, if that's the case, follow up question, why have you been holding out on us with these literary skills for six episodes? I don't also, know. I'm half asleep uh, still. The coffee's yet to kick in. I did think about doing a Tony Blackburn impression. After being torn to a gazillion pieces and thrown into the warpstone, <laughs> Forger's Nagash was defeated and Clan Rickek claimed the fortress Nagashisar for themselves. <laughs> Next, War of Krakara make peaks, a particularly long and nasty battle in the Warhammer history of the Skaven spent years, generations even, attacking the dwarves and their strong hold Karakaram eight peaks who for a period managed to stave off the Skaven's underground advances with death traps and mighty ironbreaker dwarven legions however being the cunning race they are the Skaven has to plan and manage to convince local orc and goblin tribes to assault the dwarves from above whilst they continue to send wave after wave of Skaven underground creating a battle on two fronts I'm not even finished yet in addition to this, a deviously <laughs> merciless plan to escape and slowly poison the dwarven water supply with toxic warpstone. And over some months, after being poisoned, relentlessly assaulted from above and below, as well being subject to the new scaven weaponry such as poisoned wind globe or balls of glass, noxious glass stuff. <laughs> This is exhausting. Nah, nah. The dwarves were finally defeated and the eight peaks fell, <laughs> allowing Skaven warlords to clans to overrun it and name it the City of Pillars. Oh, I'm tagging you in, Darren. The first war, civil Skaven war, please. 
No, Ooh. you've completely stolen my thunder. This now is <laughs> okay. the new this show. This was the rise of Clan Pestilence, in which the Clan long forgot about the Skaven, but who had, in fact, been growing in number and in power and power in a temple city in deepest Lustria. After Natty being wiped out and going mad in the swamps of the tropical regions of Lustria, the Clan was visited by an epiphany and told if they dedicated their life to the Great Horned Rat, they could be saved. And so, by sacrificing all non-Skaven living things in the jungle and revering the diseases that were actually killing them, it gave rise to a new breed the skaven clan pestilence with a new drive to s- i spelt that wrong with a new drive to slay all those <laughs> lords of the council of the 13 they fought their way out of the jungle domain slaying and sacrificing many lizard men and skinks en route finally reaching the coast and constructing ramshackle craft to craft the seas and reach the southlands establishing bases in order to prepare their assault on the rest of the skaven clanage and so began the skaven civil war where for hundreds and hundreds of years the skaven clans were divided between the north faction led by the council of 13 and the south by the plague lands and that's where my notes end <laughs> did you just leave an intro cliffhanger on the episode that we didn't have a cliffhanger on <laughs> i think so <laughs> i went there uh, 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 well, to, now was... I just I want I want it to be known that I am not happy with this improvement in the summary, and <clears throat> I'm next episode I'm going to summarize this summary. Yeah, that was yeah. Okay. I have to say that was <laughs> that was that was an epic summary. I mean, I use summary in the lightest of terms, like the lightest. It, we, I pretty terms. much just recited the whole fucking thing. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. much an episode in <laughs> yeah. Skaven history in 60 seconds. <laughs> and 29 different voices. So this is your first time uh, reading a Warhammer thingy. Did you, did you, did you write it with that voice in your head, the, the original one, the kind of like, coming to a cinema near you? I did. I was just like, I'm going to do it like a, uh, an American, you know, coming next fall, Rob Schneider is a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Schneider is a Skaven storm fiend. <laughs> Deuce Bigelow, Skaven Jigelow. So let's pick that apart. Was that was that relatively <laughs> accurate in any shape or form, Darren? Was that okay? I mean, apart from it being left unfinished, yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> Story of my life. No, I I had to get a dig in there because I completely now insecure about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a bastard! And my monotone recitation. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end, then, the bit that Chris missed out, the leader of Clan Pestilence. Yeah, Lord Nurglitch. N- Lord, Ner- Lord Nurglitch? Nurglitch. God, that's a bitchin' name, isn't it? Um, it is. So it's he really goes great. to meet the council, and he goes strapped up, didn't he? He comes, he got, he comes uh, but he's got a little vial of yellow stuff. Skaven piss. Yeah, yellow fever. Yellow fever, basically scaven mm-hmm. piss, and he's like, "Let me in, or you know, it's doomsday, bitches, piss everywhere." <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let loose, and they were like, "Yeah, sure, come into the fold," and then that was it, wasn't it? <laughs> he did. Yeah, he had to kill one of the other council of thirteen members to get his seat, but he did that. So, how did yeah. he kill him? Are you aware of like a rat guy called Splinter? Hmm. Yes. Very much like that. Okay, straight away that joke landed on its arse. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Insert can laughter here. <laughs> I think I may, I'm, I'm real close to going on strike. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, before you do that, give us an episode's worth of content. Um, so what are we... Firstly, good work, Kraut. Oh, it's great work. Secondly, what are we on this month? Uh, this month we're going to kind of look at the two largest Skaven Wars and have a quick look at what these guys are up to in present day in the Warhammer world, which is around 2520 to 2530, depending on which book you're reading. Right. So the first thing we're going to look at is what's known as the Great Skaven Wars, which happened between 1111 and uh, 1,124 in the imperial calendar. Um, And it should come as no surprise that the number 13 is in there because that's the lucky number for Skaven. Mm. So it took the Skaven centuries to recover from the civil war because somewhere between 20 and 25% of the entire Skaven race had been consumed in the war. 
So the yeah. army started to grow larger again. There was relative peace in terms of how Escaven was envisaged it. But this led to thousands of armies, thousands of warlord clans, each with innumerable thousands of clan rats, Skaven slaves, storm vermin and warlords and the associated beasts. Or as Brian Crox would say, billions and billions of stars <laughs> of rats. Skaven. <laughs> Funnily enough, stars is a, what do you call it? Well, not an acronym. What's it when you can rearrange the letters? Anagram. Anagram. Anagram, like Santa and Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and stars is an anagram of Skaven, is that what you're saying? Billion, well, no, rats. stars and rats. You oh, right. <laughs> illiterate. Come on, guy. Ben, come on. You're uh, the PR uh, guy. Yeah, but I'm the, I'm the PR guy for Skaven, therefore everything is an anagram of Skaven. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Skaven that's did it. how it works. <laughs> Skaven did works. it. Works. Anagram of Skaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Now everyone's just sitting here trying to work out what an anagram of works would be. Skaven. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, you idiot. So in addition to the growth of all these armies, it gave the time for the relatively newly arrived clans of Eshin and Pestilins, which are the ninjas and the diseased guys, respectively, to bed into Skaven culture and become, again, as far as a Skaven would understand it, loyal uh, to the Council of Thirteen. With this growth of Skaven power and the addition of the two new clans, over time, the Council of Thirteen felt it was time to take the world of men down. And so, in the winter of 1111, they released the Black Plague. Real original, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I would be slow to poke fun at the Skaven because even if they don't exist, I'm not chancing my luck. <laughs> it's like Pascal's wager, isn't it? Um, it, really, you know. it really, really is. <laughs> I choose to believe and fear them because it minimizes my risk of having yellow urine poured in my eye or whatever they do. We do do that. That is a thing we do. <laughs> I've got a genuine problem with Schrodinger's Skaven. It's it's a real problem for me now at the minute. <laughs> they don't exist Skaven. and they exist at any time. Schrodinger's rat. The Skaven is both inside and outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's not how Schrodinger works at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, sorry. Interestingly, just to, to go tangentially from this, it's a little known fact that Schrodinger is in fact an anagram of Skaven. It's so true. Uh, it is ah, so true. Yeah. yeah, it's true, nice. isn't it? Nice. I mean, I'm real close to stopping making fucking jokes altogether. <laughs> that <laughs> no, was don't. a good one, mate. It, it makes good one. Joke sound amazing. I'm just a bit disappointed I didn't get it. <laughs> As in, like, I wasn't the first one to say it, because obviously that's my job as a PR for Skaven, you know? I think I'm actually now terrified that I'm a living example of Schrodinger's jokes. They are both <laughs> jokes and not jokes at the same time. Darren, do your jokes. Embrace the jokiness. It's fine. That's yeah, don't worry funny. about it. I make you sound funny in post. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You've heard the term, you can't polish a turd. Well, yeah, I can. <laughs> ben is living proof that turd polishing is possible. I've been polishing your shit for the last seven episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've lived with clinical depression since I was about 12, but this really makes me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not even a joke, but it's funny. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the funniest thing you've ever said. <laughs> I think the thing I have to go for is not jokes, it's schadenfreude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the ratties. To give you an example of how cunning these little fuckers are, they started infecting people with the Black Plague in three major cities, in Nuln, Altdorf, and Talabheim. And they did this because these were the major trade routes, the trade hubs of the empire, uh, and thus into the wider world. So gradually, very much like the end of that god-awful Planet of the Apes movie, you see the the spread of infection across the world. Mm. 
The infection itself is pretty bleak. It starts with black splotches appearing all over your body, uh, so you look a bit like a Frisian, and then your your joints swell. So all your joints swell, so you look like you've got uh, little spheres <laughs> under your skin. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> for it. Going, no, our listeners can't man. see it, but Chris is kind of checking himself in tandem with his description. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, two out of two. What next? <laughs> they then get really bad fever, really hot fever, and finally... They're really awesome? Please don't tell me they're really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then in, in the final uh, hours of their life, they get violent convulsions, and... From infection to death, it can last from minutes to weeks, and you end up as an ash grey corpse. I think I'm about to have violent convulsions. <laughs> <laughs> so it started spreading from those three cities. The other major city, Middenheim, escaped infection due to early action in terms of just uh, a blanket quarantine and patrolling and protection of all their water sources and food stores. Now, I'm not going to draw parallels between this <laughs> and recent events in our world, but let's just move on. I just want to say, as the PR representative for Skaven, we had nothing to do with COVID. That was not us, guys. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we wish we were involved, but we're not. <laughs> it was very noble of you. Thank you. So outside of these cities, entire villages and townships were lost due to the spread of this disease. It should be noted that there were no Skaven appearing above ground at this stage. It was literally just the spread of a plague, letting humanity's stupidity drive itself to its own demise. With the loss of all these uh, settlements and towns, the grief felt by so many survivors manifested in the creation of bands and groups of what's called flagellants. These are the kind of end-of-world cults of the Empire who are wholly devoted to Sigmar and very much like the Dwarven Troll Slayers just want a, a noble death advancing their gods kind of uh, agenda. Flagellance. Is that a term unique? To, I've never heard that before. Is that a term unique to, to Warhammer? Flagellance? Uh, no, it's something that's kind of embedded into, I wanted to say up until medieval religious practice, but it actually continues to this day where people whip themselves into a frenzy. Oh, right. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Flagellation. Flagellation, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I had the word flatulence in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. He went there. He went there. <laughs> no, th those are a religious order of Nurgle. <laughs> right Nurgle, Nurgle. Uh, hey darren that was a joke and i laughed well done mate <laughs> oh that was a laugh was it okay <laughs> it was that was i felt that one i felt it right in me bones <laughs> so within six months we're now looking at the spring of 1112 the disease had largely abated in the south of the empire but still raged in the north and the death toll was quite staggering. So three out of every 10 humans was dead from this um, sure. plague. So the Council of 13 decided that it was time to unleash all of the warlord clans. And I mean all of them. So millions upon millions of little ratty fuckers in armor. Billions and billions <laughs> of stars. So this meant that the depopulated regions of the empire were overrun almost instantly and larger townships, uh, especially the walled townships, were destroyed or the walls were destroyed by the screaming bells, the great esoteric magical war engines of the Skaven, which mirrored the great bell on top of the temple in Skaven Blight. So a great brass monstrosity that if it tolls 13 times, it just brings rack and ruin to its targets. How does it target? Do you just bring it near to something and ring it 13 times? Well, its power is usually focused through a grey seer. And if people remember, that's the kind of priesthood of the horned rat. Oh, yeah. uh, and these little ratty bastards sit on top of the kind of mechanism for the screaming bell and um, direct its magical energies towards targets. So, it, it, right. again, magical, spiritual sniper scope. Right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. 
That is pretty so, cool. So with all these towns being overrun, the defenders were usually killed and eaten. Livestock and crops were looted and brought back into the Under Empire to serve the war effort. Ultimately, almost every township was destroyed outside of a major city or defended stronghold, which led to really three main cities remaining, which were Altdorf, Nuln and Middenheim. Now, Altdorf is the capital of the empire. Nuln is where the kind of great forges are, where they make all their projectile weaponry, cannons and handguns and so forth. That's the one that's got lots of dwarves in it, isn't it? Exactly right. And Middenheim is the city that's built on top of a mountain, Mm. an isolated mountain. And that's the one that kind of kept the flame going by making sure they followed medical advice. Right. Question. Yes. About the Bell of Doom. Yeah? What happens when it rings 14 times? (laughs) Santa arrives. I don't think that's ever been covered in the lore, but in the game, in the actual tabletop game... You win the game. (laughs) When you... (laughs) If you can roll a 14 on a 6D, you win. (laughs) No, they used to have a (laughs) dice you would roll with your regular D6s, which if it came up with a misfire, meant that the bell cracked and a large kind of area around it was just instant death for anything that was there, which was usually (laughs) Skaven. Wow. Yeah, right. Okay. So the kind of depopulation through warfare took another three years. Uh, So we find ourselves now in 1115, and it comes with the death of Emperor Boris Goldgatherer. What did he do? (laughs) He he, he hoarded silver. Um, (laughs) He was one of the last victims of the actual plague, so he died from disease rather than warfare, but he was incredibly unpopular because as soon as the plague started, he just gathered all his kind of lackeys in his big manner and had parties every night while the world outside was being destroyed and he basically couldn't give a shit well i mean you would if like you were a gold hoarder and you were like look the world is about to destroy itself i mean what am i going to do with all this gold (laughs) exactly i can't take it with me (laughs) yeah i certainly can't spend it because everyone that i would spend it with is dead (laughs) <laughs> so let's just have a massive party invite everyone over yeah maybe a few skaven mark yeah. and a man <laughs> <laughs> so towards the end of the year the black plague had finally run its course and the effects of the plague together with the warfare brought about the result that seven out of every ten human being on the surface of the empire was dead Wow, that's that's a lot of death. And four whole provinces of the empire, uh, the empire being made up of 12 provinces, four whole provinces, uh, Reichland, Averland, Wizenland, and Talibakland, were completely under control of the Skaven. Ouch. It was one of our more successful campaigns, I have to say. (laughs) 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 So then... For the next seven years, up until 1122, the Skaven went through systematic process of enslavement. So they caught everyone they could who was still alive, and columns of humans disappeared into the slave pits of Ubersreich or Fieldorf, both of which are locations that you can visit in the game Vermintide. Um, And they went into the mines, stripping ore from the earth, or they went to the fields to grow the corrupted black corn that the Skaven eat. I love the fact that you can have like guided tours in the game of Warhammer. (laughs) And over here, many eons ago, pillars of humans, as Darren described them, disappeared into the mines of columns. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> pillars of human is a chaos thing i'll tell you what that tour guide's to accent was that was that was a tough one to pinpoint it started as american <laughs> ended up as grantham i think and went through australia 
Good eye, mate. Zimbabwe, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear your let's hear your guide tour guide accent, Ben. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll I'll work on it. I'll come back okay. to you. <laughs> you do that. It'd probably be Australia now. I have to admit. Just over here, we've got the columns of humans. Off to the uh, off I to the mice. I do South African. Hello, my name is Vickers. I will be your guide today. And if you look over there, you can see columns of humans being <laughs> <laughs> off to the mines. Rogan, pass the potatoes. Rogan. Um. At Kev's Art Construction, we aim to deliver the highest quality service for the lowest possible price. We pride ourselves on swift project completion, 24 hours guaranteed. We work on a flat rate, one project in exchange for permission to install one horn bell. Whatever your project size, our price guarantee holds firm. Impossibly tall temple spire, one horn bell. A 400 house residential estate, one horn bell. A whole new city, you guessed it, one horn bell. So if you're slammed with an upcoming construction deadline with no hope of success and a need to complete regardless of the consequences, call 0800 Rock the Cavs Art today and let us make all your nightmares, I mean your dreams come true. Cavs Art Construction. Fuck yeah. So interestingly, the area where the Skaven had most difficulty was Sylvania. Every time they went in, either in a kind of skirmish formation or en masse for a large battle, they just ran into a literal wall of zombies and ghouls. Uh, Sylvania, of course, being the land of the undead. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, And this, I think, brought back some sort of racial fear brought on by encountering Nagash, Ash, Ash, ash. <laughs> and um, they withdrew from Sylvania and didn't bother going in there again. But given the sheer volume of loot and slaves that were brought back into the Under Empire, principally by Clan Pestilence, the whole clan's power and status rose again. Ultimately, two more of the kind of great warlords of Clan Pestilence challenged for positions on the Council of Thirteen and won meaning that they now held three of the 13 seats uh, and so had an inordinate amount of influence on what could and could not be done. During the Civil War, was it not like half of the total Skaven population went over to Clan Pestilence anyway? what's, What's the kind of percentage of the total that are under Clan Pestilence rule? It's difficult to say. It's not really addressed properly, but I think once uh, Lord Nurglich was on the Council of Thirteen, the kind of need for the war disappeared. So the alliances broke. Uh, everyone went back to their own self-interest. So I think oh, that, that's right because they they kind of picked up all of those um, clans as they'd been going along, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 So while the Skaven dominated the Empire, all had not gone precisely as planned. Starting in the year 1118, they laid siege to the final kind of bastion of mankind, Middenheim, principally with these huge sniper rifles called Gisales, which are like enormous warp stone muskets. And of course, with the usual tunnel fighting and dirty tricks campaigns underneath the cities. And name calling. Name calling. Uh, <laughs> Square bears. <laughs> yeah, I know you are, but what am I? In strongly worded letters. Chris, on behalf of the Skaven, I'd just like to uh, offer you a job. <laughs> a job? Go on. I think you, you, you're showing a lot of potential. We need somebody like you in our ranks. The pay isn't great, but the work is hard. And all the warpstone you can eat. All the nom nom nommy nom nom. Well, it turns out I hate Skaven and I'm allergic to Warpstone, so I kindly refuse the offer, you rat bastards. Note to self, add Christopher Allen to Skaven hit list. (laughs) Send (laughs) Kralin a strongly worded letter. (laughs) Made of (laughs) Warpstone. Note to self, do not try and recruit halflings again. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, excellent. Excellent. For the record, everyone, that is hilarious because Chris is tiny. <laughs> I'm not tiny. I'm vertically challenged. I'm not tiny. <laughs> I'm not tiny. I'm just far away. You don't look you, you don't look tiny now, Chris, sitting on those four yellow pages. What I lack in height, I make up for in phone books. <laughs> in phone books and uh, being your friend, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about yeah. flagellation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh sorry, flagellation. <laughs> So despite their best efforts, all Skaven attacks were repulsed in and around the city of Middenheim. The Elector Count there, Mandred von Zelt, was seen to be everywhere he was needed. Uh, In the tunnels, on the ramparts, in the kitchens, helping out with the dishes. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That sounds like a carry-on film, doesn't it? (laughs) Just everywhere you look, he's there, dressed in different outfits. (laughs) Hold on, you were in the kitchen two minutes ago. <laughs> he was the Shaggy of Middenheim. <laughs> it wasn't me, that Shaggy. Put a cut on the warp stone. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And did it in the cripple peak. It wasn't me. <laughs> but then you poisoned their fucking water, you ruthless bastard. It wasn't me. That was him. <laughs> <laughs> Despite their best efforts, however, the sheer number of Skaven meant that they were eventually going to just grind down any resistance. But fortunately for humans, disaster struck. <gasps> um, I'm going to try and say this with no sense of irony. The Black Plague mutated and a variant, we're called the Middenheim variant, started to infect <laughs> Skaven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was as virulent as it was with humans, which oh. meant that whole warrens and clans were just dissolved in their own crapulence. And a fifth um, lockdown was imposed. <laughs> <laughs> Skaven weren't allowed out after. <clears throat> no more than three Skaven households may mix in a <laughs> tunnel at any one time unless it's very hard to do social distancing in tunnels that's it and you are allowed to eat and drink inside if the wind is blowing from the north <laughs> on the upside the <laughs> clan skaven masks did very very well during this period <laughs> that's it a lot of entrepreneurs came to light during the fifth <laughs> Fifth Skaven lockdown. <laughs> Skaven furlough scheme was extended for another eight months. Putting the fur in furlough. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> right, okay. So with the Skaven being devoured by the Black Plague, there are skirmishes and wars and battles and conflicts they were defeated time and time again with mandrid the man of teleportation was everywhere leading a crusading (laughs) army so he he brought his army all over the empire destroying skaven armies and liberating the kind of last strongholds of humanity and performing frankly miracles with his army of first responders The counterattack came at the Battle of Howling Hills, where the warlord uh, Vermic of Clan Moors, who was in fact also a Lord of Decay, so one of the Council of Thirteen, tried to bring humanity to an end by destroying Mandred's crusading army. But Mandred, being the utter chad he was, beheaded the Lord of Decay which led ultimately to the collapse of the war effort because not only were humans... Well, he had no head. uh, Of course it would cause the collapse of the war effort. (laughs) (laughs) You're not going to do much with that head, are you? (laughs) (laughs) But by this time, the Skaven had gathered so many slaves that there was a genuine fear of a, a slave revolt 
because, you know, there were more humans in the Skaven under Empire than there were on the surface. Wow. So by 1124, the war was over. And Mandred, Mandred von Zelt, was declared emperor. And interestingly, when he was declared emperor, he still had the skull of the Lord of Decay mounted on his helmet. Nice. Man- Mandred, it's time to put the skull away. <laughs> no! <Yeah. laughs> no! I could give it up any time I want to, I just don't want to. <laughs> and he no longer was referred to as Mandred von Zelt. He then became <gasps> Mandred Skavenslayer. That was when he became called it. Yeah. He wasn't called it all along. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and he ruled the empire for 25 years, rebuilding as many townships and fortresses and cities as he could, welcoming back all the refugees who had fled. The kind of long feared slave revolt actually did occur. So thousands upon thousands of imperial citizens returned to the surface and were welcomed back and, you know, encouraged to have as many children as possible. His longest lasting legacy was the formation of something called the Sewer Watch, which was an armed patrol, an armed force that patrolled the sewers of all major imperial settlements, making sure that they can stop a Skaven insurgency in its tracks. Now, in the thousand years since he was the emperor, he's largely been relegated to something of a historical joke. The imperial citizens stopped believing in Skaven. Now, we've addressed this previously, but... I think it's the unseen hand of Clan Eshin as they're killing all the academics. Anyone who brings up the Skaven is found mysteriously dead inside a locked room. And so the Great Skaven War is thought to have just been a huge horde of rats that came about after the Black Plague, which was thought to just be a naturally occurring event. And ultimately, he's seen as some sort of Pied Piper figure leading the rats away so that he could kill them. I wasn't involved in this particular PR event, but I have to say it is one of the <laughs> most successful that the Skaven have ever <laughs> brought forward. I, I wish I'd been involved. Right. Questions. Go. I have two questions. Firstly, the big ass sniper rifles that you mentioned that they used in the siege. Yes. I think I've seen something like that before. Are they so big that they have two little rats at the front holding the the muzzle? Muzzle. Yeah, they have one Skaven at the front who's using a what's called a pavese, a very large kind of triangular shield with a notch in the top, and the other Skaven has got this eight-foot-long rifle uh, that fires <laughs> uh, warp stone Amazing. bullets. Amazing. Yeah. Is it is it a figure? I think I've seen that figure. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good figure as well. Yeah. We should put a picture of that in the uh, the old show notes. Yep, yep, yep. And my other question was, how did the Skaven not figure out? Or surely there was some Skaven that knew of the mutating potential of a, a disease of a virus, you know, like the Black Plague. Did they not were they completely unprepared for a sort of mutation that could affect them? No, I think that they were unprepared for it insofar as it was developed by Clan Pestilens who were enacting, as far as they could see, the will of the horned rat. So ultimately they believed what they were doing was beneficial to their cause. So perhaps, you know, Skaven not being the most health and safety minded didn't kind of do that bit of risk assessment. Right, yeah. I'll do it. Now, it should be noted that the Skaven actually learned from this experience and tried to do a similar thing 600 years later to Bretonia, the Arthurian ripoff kingdom. (laughs) Uh, This time they developed a plague called the Red Pox, which they were actually quite loath to deploy because their first thought was to manipulate the rulers of Britonia through targeted assassinations, blackmail, you know, bribery, that kind of thing, to go to war with other nations. In terms of Britonia, it was principally with Araby, which is the fantasy version of the kind of Arabian Nights style 
vision of the Arabian Peninsula. Mm. So you had three main kind of uh, combats. You had the invasion of Jafar, which is a city, not a vizier. <laughs> you had nice. the Crusades, which are very much similar to the Crusades of our own time. And the what's called Wars of Errantry, where you had all these kind of squires who had to go on these big quests to be able to become a full-fledged knight. So they, you know, thousands mm. of these young warriors would be sent off to various locations, principally to their death. So ultimately it was to weaken the military might of Bretonia to see what they could do. Mm. Bretonia still remained powerful, so they introduced the Red Pox in a city called Bordeloo uh, in their poor Bordeloo. quarter. <laughs> Bordeloo. <laughs> Bordeloo. <laughs> but you dead, Red Pox. <laughs> I, did think, I, I did think we were overdue for one of uh, Crowland's musical interludes. Outburst. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> <Crowland> <laughs> the musical. <laughs> Starring Christopher Allen as himself. <laughs> Crowlin on ice. <laughs> no? okay. Sometimes I wish we could put you on ice. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, this effort against Bretonia was doomed to failure because their allies, the Wood Elves, came to the rescue, destroying the major Skaven army which had laid siege to two cities, uh, Brion and Quinells. Are these the really like theatrical wood elves that kind of like do like loops through and like, ha, huzzah? Which clan were they? The ninja type tree elves. Well, no, it was the, the wood elves as a whole, as it were, including all their dryad allies. So like an army, not kind of coming yeah. in like yeah. theatrically. <laughs> No, they sent one elf who was their equivalent of Chuck Norris. <laughs> oh, you're doomed. <laughs> well, that is the end of the Great War. Wow. The Great oh, Skaven thank War. God. I'm whew, tiring of that Great, Great War. We move on to the Second Skaven Civil War. So in the aftermath of the failed attempts to bring the Empire and Bretonia to its knees... Skaven civilization entered into a period of recrimination and the Council of Thirteen tried to cast out the three plague lords uh, and that was brought to a vote. But before the vote could happen, Clan Pestilence once again rose in open revolt and tried to kill pretty much everything that moved in and around the Great Temple in Skaven Blight. In the tunnels and corridors and rooms of the of the Great Temple, you had the albino storm vermin, these huge bodyguards, fighting against all the plague priests and the three plague lords itself. Wow. And ultimately, this led to pestilence being repulsed from Skaven Blight, so they were effectively just kicked out of Skaven society. And seeing a power vacuum, Clan Skyar, these are the engineers, the kind of weird steampunk engineers, mm. uh, took charge of the temple and set up innumerable sniper teams using the Gisales again, Ben, uh, right. on all the roofs and horizontal surfaces, shelves, cupboards, worktops, this kind of thing. Lean twos. And obviously, <laughs> with most of Skaven Blight being underneath the ground, they put war machines of various and deadly kinds at all the entrances. This led Lord Mor Skitar, who was the leader, the lord of Clan Scryer, effectively to become the tyrant of the city. And his plan was to re-establish the Council of Thirteen under his command. So very much Skaven were heading towards becoming a nation ruled by mad scientists. Wow. Skaven being Skaven... Unfortunately, the infighting spread out through all of the Under Empire, and so it ended up with many, many factions. In fact, as many factions as there are clans. And over 400 years, Skaven society fractured into you know thousands of rival organizations, so great clans and all the warlord clans and coalitions in constant warfare with each other, with only Clan Eshin, the assassins, remaining neutral because they, you could hire them to go and kill your enemy. And right. so they became incredibly wealthy and powerful. 
It sounds like the Skaven society really breaking down now. It really is. It really is. It's not looking good. And where, when you say uh, wealthy, what do you? I mean, are we talking wealthy in Warpstone? What's their, you know, what's the currency? What's their legal tender? <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, Warpstone, but also influence. Right. Okay. Exposure. Nice. <laughs> I can't pay the fucking bills with exposure, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're not trying hard enough. <laughs> Expose yourself more. So o- over these uh, 400 years, Clan Scryer had been kicked out of Skaven Blight and almost in a clockwork uh, style, more clans took over Skaven Blight, but only to lose control again. Ultimately, Clan Scryer was able to reoccupy the city and rebuild its main stronghold there and just start a program of research and development of really incredible world-ending uh, warp stone-powered machinery. Nice. As they were building these machines, they detected a rising tide of dark magic coming from the north. And Morslieb, if our listeners will remember, Morslieb is the green moon, the green warpstone moon, sent showers of warpstone all over the world, which was followed closely by the largest chaos army ever assembled that descended into the lands of men and pretty much did to the empire what the Skaven had tried to do to the Empire and brought it to the brink of destruction. Um, But the Skaven just kind of like looked up like, we've been trying to do that for generations. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking hell. (laughs) Hi, I'm Rapid Randy at Rapid Randy Ski Hire up here at Cripple Peak Snow Resort. We got everything that you need to ski. We got poles, we got planks of wood, we got fan-based propulsion systems. Don't ask how they work. We got parts of helmets, we got fingers for fingerless gloves. We got everything that you could need, very possibly, all at low, low prices. So get here, get it quick. We're very busy, at least two days a year, sometimes three. And oh man, you you just gotta have the best time at Cripple Peak. The snow resort is just it's just really great. It's got bumps, it's got turns, it's got random holes, it's got warp stone deposits, it's got undead fighting scaven like non stop like all the time it's got very little snow but it does have gravity and we got everything that you need to get down the mountain safely so come see us at rapid randy ski hire i'm rapid randy i do not know what i'm selling i do not know how to ski it's all a complete mystery to me but it's not to you and that's what's important i think all right goodbye But through their use of the machinery, Clan Scryer could see that some great event was coming and that they wanted to be ready. And so in their research into what could happen, they discovered that the Grey Seers, the 169 high priests of the Horned Rat, are planning a huge ritual. This started with the Grey Seers summoning the leaders of every clan to Skaven Blight for the celebration of, are you ready? Vermintide. Oh my God. We've come full circle. (laughs) (laughs) And they all had to attend or suffer the wrath of the horned rat himself. With these threats and the power of the Graciers, all clans did come to assemble there, either as a whole, en masse, Or they sent uh, their leaders and representatives because none dared stay away. So for the second time in history, all of the leaders of the clans stood before the doors of the temple with an air of palpable expectation and fear surrounded them. The temple doors open and all 169 grey seers file out. The last of which is Grey Lord Christoslix. Try saying that when you're drunk. Uh, <laughs> Christoflix. Christoslix. Christ Christoslix. Yep. Wow. Does it sound very Skaven like? <laughs> Christoflix. It sounds like my porn name or something. <laughs> oh, I think we found your new intro name. <laughs> Christoflix. And my co-host, <laughs> Christoslix. <laughs> So the Sea Lords file out and the the Seer Lord, Christus Lix, is the last one out of the temple and in his claws 
is a great skin-bound book which he lays on an iron altar in front of the assembled Skaven Empire. So between the Grey Seers and the assembled masses of uh, Skaven leadership, chained to the ground were 169 Skaven slaves who were literally pissing everywhere in terror. So the Seer Lord steps up to start the ritual and starts chanting in his kind of ratty monotone. And as he does so, it's picked up by the other Grey Seers, the other 168 Grey Seers who are chanting slowly as well. And the air around them seems to kind of twist and crack with sheer raw power. And then slowly, each Grey Seer comes down and sacrifices one of the slaves but as they progress through them, the slaves are killed in more and more torturous fashion. So the squeals of fear and pain reach out to the horned rat himself, who begins to gnaw at the very concept of reason itself for those in attendance. As the final slave dies, the great bell, the one that the mysterious stranger placed on the top of the tower way back when, begins to toll. And with each toll, lightning and peals of thunder and the sound of millions of scratching claws begins to fill the air. And when it tolls for the final time, the 13th time, because of course when it's Skaven, the magical number is 13, the whole city of Skavenblight just falls completely silent. There's no noise. Nothing stirs or moves. The Seer Lord, Lord Christoslix, begins to convulse, throws his head back and screams, but the screams sound as if it's echoing through, you know, vast chasms. And a kind of black, greenish-tinged vapour pours out of his mouth and fills the sky above the temple. As it expands and expands, reaching a clawed hand through the huge black cloud, the horned rat himself arrives his skin is ashy black and cracked. He, when looking into the cloud above the temple, all the Skaven can see are two glowing red eyes the size of houses. And the hand reaches down, scoops up scores of Skaven, and bringing them back up to the cloud, you see the sharp, enormous teeth of a, a, a rodent chewing down on his children. And time and again, the hand comes down, scoops up Skaven, shoves them into his maw again and again and again. I suspect for 13 times. I can't tell you why. Because um, <laughs> he's OCD. <laughs> <laughs> seemingly sated, the hand forms into a huge fist and slams down into the plaza in front of the great temple and opens and pulls back into the cloud. What's left where his fist had been is a huge 13-sided pillar of pure warp stone upon which are carved all of his rules for Skaven plus what's called his prophecy for the Great Ascendancy, a time when all Skaven would rise and cover the earth and the earth would become his domain and he could manifest fully. So in a voice of a million chewing mouths, he communicated to the Skaven that he was amused by their little civil wars, but it must now stop so that they could spread his influence all over the world. And only his chosen could touch the pillar and live. And these chosen Skaven would form the new Council of Thirteen. So over a several days, each warlord, each leader of the clans went up and placed their claws, placed their paw on the pillar. And almost all of them burst into green and black flames, burning in agony and ending up as just a pile of ash at the bottom of the pillar. The first one to do so was called Lord Rackin, and he was the first to die. At the end of it, only 12 survived, imbued with further magical power by the Great Horned Rat, and those 12 have remained 
in charge ever since then. So for over 40 years now in setting. So while there have been other warlords who've been able to touch the pillar and live, none have been able to best any of the other 12 in combat and thus take their place. Thus ends the tale of the second Skaven Civil War. Thus ends the tales. Nice. (laughs) That was so cool. That was pretty epic. Except there was one bit. When you said, and in the voice of a million chewing mouths, I just imagine this guy like, so like, what you got to do, right, right? You got to start fighting amongst yourselves. Okay, start fighting amongst yourselves. And um, yeah, you got to take over the world, isn't it? <laughs> from, from the story so far, I think I kind of pictured the horned rat as like not a physical manifestation do you know what i mean like not not an actual thing like a god that was believed in but there was no real evidence of it yeah but yeah that's that's definitely put my theory to to rest i think (laughs) i mean a big a big clawed hand coming out of a black cloud and leaving you know some instructions is uh it's pretty final you can't really argue with that can you not really. Maybe it's because we haven't gone into a lot of the law and history of the other races and species so far. I mean, we did a bit of orcs and stuff, but the orcs are pretty basic, right? But the Skaven seem to have the most epic and engrossing, awesome history, whether it's good or bad. You know, Poisoning Dwarves, which is a dick move, but they've got an <laughs> awesome backstory, definitely. Yeah. I, I completely agree, and I think it's one of the things we'll discover as we explore places like the empire bretonia lustria the lizard men the wood elves chaos you'll see a reflection of some of this kind of skaven history but from the other view right right Mm. maybe getting ahead of ourselves now but those instructions that were left regarding skaven kind of conquering the entire planet and and turning it into the domain of the horned rat is that starts to happen or it does happen is that right i know that we we're probably going to deal with like the end times another time but it goes in that direction does it not i don't know why i think that i think you may have mentioned it in an earlier episode i think you should call them commandments not instructions it makes them sound less meaningful (laughs) (laughs) instructions here is a list of suggestions always leave the toilet seat down (laughs) always look on the bright side of life Always leave the toilet paper in the overhang position. Don't wank in the bath. Especially not if you're in it. Always wipe front to back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my, my question still stands. Is that something that happens later on? Uh, yes, the, the Skaven certainly do their damnedest to enact the will of the horned rat, but those pesky humans and pesky other non-human races do get in their way. They do have right. some success against uh, lizard men, right. but that's mostly because the skinks and the and the skaven are not really the best of pals. And mm-hmm. ultimately, the skaven race fractures the warpstone moon Morsleib and crashes it into Lustria, uh, destroying the lizard men. Spoilers. Nice splat. So the. <laughs> The intervention of the Horned Rat and his commandments, not instructions, commandments, led to a greater coordination between all the clans. Infighting between the Skaven almost completely disappeared, and the Council of Thirteen has used the Grey Seers as messengers uh, and even occasional warlords on special missions. And so they are dispersed all over the Under Empire, all over the world of Warhammer, to make sure that uh, the clans that are involved in any kind of mission or war toe the line. Because of this, there's been a huge population growth, a boom of little scavy babies, (laughs) where previously the civil war and the ill-thought-out plagues kept the population check. Um, That really has ended now. So with this growth has come a renewed dream of 
ruling the the world above the the sunshine world we'll call it <laughs> how lovely and so they've begun depopulating entire communities around about the blighted marshes or the zombie marshes as they were known where skaven blight is situated which means that there are hundreds of just ghost towns in that part of warhammer world where there's not only no trace of any of their original population but no trace of who took them the Skaven being extra cautious to make sure that they leave no trace of themselves. Although some towns are even disappeared into huge sinkholes that are opened up underneath them because the Skaven have tunneled all the earth away, all the supporting earth away, so that they can just claim that entire settlement. Clan Pestilence and Clan Septic, great names. Wow have raided along the bottom, the kind of southeastern section of the empire around the province of Wizenland, principally just to depopulate the area so they've got freedom to move. But ultimately, unfortunately, they were discovered and the city-state of Nuln, where the, the great forges, the cannons, the dwarves, that kind of stuff, they struck back and destroyed a good proportion of that army which fled back underground. But this obviously pissed off the Council of Thirteen, so they charged a grey seer known as Thangwall, who is the kind of archetypal Skaven character in Warhammer lore, to lead an army to destroy Nuln. But this guy is so monumentally inept that he botched the entire job, which resulted in most of his army being destroyed and half of Nuln collapsing into the ground. Oh, that's right. And then he was congratulated, wasn't he? He was congratulated because the Warlord clan was planning to betray the Council of Thirteen. That's right. Uh, yeah. So he has the luck of the ratish, so we say. Huh. Huh. Really, what you're looking at now is that the Council of Thirteen, following the plan of Great Ascendancy left down by the Horned Rat, remember, commandment, not instruction, um, <laughs> <laughs> suggestion has ordered the Skaven to really just gnaw at the edges of humanity while they manipulate events through assassination, bribery, blackmail to disrupt uh, the alliances of the human nations and to ensure that for the time being, humanity believes them to be a myth. Thus ends the history of the Skaven. Wow. And they all lived happily ever after. No, wait. <laughs> the, the, I have a question. You mentioned that um, the settlement that fell into the sinkhole, was that was a Skaven settlement? No, the Skaven, as well as depopulating entire townships above ground, they are also tunneling underneath various towns and just letting them fall into the, the holes that they tunnel. Oh, um, I see. Um, like human settlements. Yes, it's a method of warfare, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, because that sounds quite effective. Why didn't they try that with one of the bigger cities? Because they need the slaves. Because they need... If they did oh. that with bigger... Most of them would die. There, there would be no additional resources they could gain from it. Right, so they're still enslaving humans in the current yes. day. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, that seems counterproductive then, doesn't it? <laughs> Some PR guy you are. <laughs> um, my PR department hadn't advised me of that particular methodology so yeah <laughs> that's it so questions about the history of the Skaven well I mean I think you've answered everything inherently by going through it like a fine tooth comb in the past two episodes um, <laughs> but yeah pestilence they sound pesky and they are just causing shit for Skaven and non-Skaven alike They've got a real agenda against anything, haven't they? That sounds like your kind of clan, doesn't it, Chris? Yeah. Just the pain yeah. in the arse. <laughs> just there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I can, I can hold testament to that. <laughs> when when uh, uh, Darren was telling us about when they... I can't remember which part of the history this was when they were sending like the grey ones or some of the council out to try and spread the word or something. It sounded like Ben's PR job right there. With, there with his <laughs> making sure they're on brand. Are you towing uh, the Skaven line? <laughs> the Skaven witnesses turn up at your door like, knock, knock, hello, we'd like to talk to you about the horned rat. 
<laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> um, Crow, over the uh, the last few episodes, obviously, we've had the kind of full breadth of the Skaven history. Which bit stood out to you the most? It, it's got to be the Battle of the Eight Peaks, hasn't it? Against the Dwarves, which went on for, well, it says generations. Is that true? It went on for hundreds of years, Darren. Is that right? Yeah, the war against Dwarves up until that point had gone on for generations. Yeah, hundreds of years. Yeah, and it was just you know going on and on and on. And then when they recruited the Orcs and Goblins to attack from above, they were attacking from below, and then they slowly, deviously poisoned the water. That was just like both awesome and awful. That's, yeah, that's it's funny that that's, that's the out. most memorable part for you, and it's the one that I have suppressed in my memory. <laughs> I, uh, I, I refuse like, to acknowledge that it happened. To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, like certain nations denying certain events in certain decades <laughs> in the 20th yeah. century. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to say that the um, the appearance of the horned rat at the end that was like, yeah, I think that and the story about the creation of the Skaven when the the human mm. the human what was the human town called? Ka- Kavzar, Kavzar, Kavzar. Yeah, yeah, Kavzar. Yeah, that was a wicked story, man. I loved that. And in typical fashion, I think we should just do our outro and not bother asking Darren what his favorite is. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks very much for listening. <laughs> Quiet, Darren. <laughs> All right, Darren. What was your favorite part of the history? Well, you wouldn't really need to guess all that much. It's the Battle of Cripple Peak where um, the Skaven equivalent of Sam and Frodo fucked up Nagashi Sauron. <laughs> uh, is that just because it has Nagash in it and you, you love a bit of the undead? Guilty as a charged. Bit of ganache. Ganache. Love some ganache. I love a bit of ganache. Love a bit of ganache. I love a another ganache, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to find out more about the topics we've discussed in this podcast, you can find all the reference articles in the show notes. And if you want to contact us directly and tell us how shit we are or how wonderful we are, you can reach us at layingdownthelore at gmail.com or at layingdownthelore on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll be back again next month displaying just how little Chris and I know. Until then, cheery bye bye. See you later. Bye. Go fuck yourselves. Oh, Darren. <laughs> I think you better retake that one, Sonny. No, that was great, mate. That's staying in. Oh, fucking hell. And just like that, laying down the law is no more. <laughs> fucking Loses his hell. entire listenership. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should do a take two, Darren. Okay, okay. Goodbye, my dear friends. <laughs> Chris, I'm not I'm not putting that in, mate. That, I, fuck off this thing. Right? We'll go with the first take. Uh, that's, that was excellent. Right, take that's three, that. this time with feeling, Darren. Go. <laughs> Bye. Cheerio. See ya. See ya.